It's May the 19th, and uh, I'd like to take this opportunity to wish my wife a happy anniversary on this 21st of May. On two days, we'll be celebrating 33 years of marital bliss, and uh, that's 396 months for those of you keeping track that way. And I'm very excited to have uh, enjoyed the last 33 years with her. Love her very much. Uh, First Baptist Church, Stellarsburg, Indiana, we are continuing our study of navigating the New Testament. And last time we concluded walking through the parables of Jesus. We began by looking at the early New Testament principles of Jesus, the childhood and the teen uh, biblical illustrations of Jesus, the stories of Jesus, the biblical accounts of his whereabouts. We looked at the Sermon on the Mount rather extensively. We spent some time looking at the parables. And tonight we're going to begin walking through some of the miracles of Jesus. Now, in the gospel accounts, there are many miracles Jesus performed here on earth. And for the most part, Christians know that Jesus performed miracles, but they'd be surprised to learn that, well, there's some that he, he performed we don't know about. Matter of fact, uh, we have a very incomplete list according to the Bible. John 21, 25 says this, And there were many other things which Jesus did, the which, if they should be written every one, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written. John closes out his great gospel with a reminder that we don't know everything there is to know about Jesus. That's why we keep reading the Bible to learn more and more. The stories that the Bible have are so important for the redemptive plan of God. But Jesus did so much more. And when I get to heaven, I hope that there's videos we can watch or Blu-rays we can watch or holograms we can watch and just see some of those great things Jesus did that the gospel accounts didn't tell us about. I wonder how many miracles Jesus performed that aren't listed in the Bible. I would imply several. But tonight as we transition and start looking at these miracles of Jesus, I want to begin with what I believe is the first miracle of Jesus. And I'm going to be honest with you, it's it's perhaps a, not necessarily a, a miracle Jesus did, but I think certainly he did. And that would be his virginal conception and miraculous birth. Now, the New Testament clearly lets us know that Jesus, the Messiah, would be coming as promised by the Old Testament. Jesus would be fully God, yet fully man. Jesus would be the ultimate sacrifice for our sins. And God's plan would be fulfilled as Jesus would become the Son of Man, being the Son of God. Jesus fulfilled that through the virginal birth. Now, Jesus was born to a woman named Mary about 2,000 years ago in a town called Bethlehem, which is near Jerusalem. It's over in the biblical land of Israel. Mary was engaged to a man named Joseph, and in Matthew 1, uh, verse 20, Joseph is called a son of David, meaning he was a descendant of David's. Now, it was King David who ruled over Israel about 1,000 years before Christ, or about 3,000 years ago. And Mary, his betrothed, his fiance, was a virgin, and she became pregnant with Jesus before as she and Joseph had come together. The miracle of the virginal conception of Jesus is recorded in the Gospels of Matthew and Luke in the New Testament, and it's an important principle for us to get a hold of. Jesus being very God, and yet the Son of Man. Let's look what the Bible tells us about this incredible miracle. Uh, beginning with Matthew chapter 1, verse 18. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph or engaged, they, before they'd come together, they'd not been intimate yet. She was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make a public example of her, was minded to put her away privately. Now, he had every right to do this. The just thing was to put away a woman who was guilty of indiscretion like that, being pregnant without being married. Although commonplace in our culture, was deeply looked upon with sadness and grief in Joseph's day. And Joseph had the right to have her put away. He could break their engagement, even though they were legally bound, yet they weren't married. They were betrothed. There was a, a union that had occurred, but they, no intimacy yet. She was pregnant. He knew it wasn't his. Keep that in mind. Joseph and Mary never forgot Jesus was special. The merciful thing to do was to put her away privately, not to embarrass her, not to make a public example, but to do the right thing in the right way because he loved her. And while he thought on these things, behold, angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, verse 20 tells us, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived of her is of the Holy Ghost. She shall bring forth a son, he shall be called Jesus, and he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done and might be fulfilled was spoken by the Lord the prophet, saying, Behold, 
A virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife, and knew her not until she had brought forth her firstborn son, and called his name Jesus. See, when Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took Mary home as his wife. He did not consummate their marriage until after the son was born, and he named him Jesus. Now, I do get it. Jesus didn't perform this miracle in the classic sense, but it's certainly a miraculous thing, an important thing for you and me to understand, because Jesus was a unique character, 100% God, 100% man. Jesus was the most valuable, uh, the most incredible, the most amazing birth ever. Now, believe it or not, uh, I'm aware of a couple of girls who've claimed that they uh, got pregnant because of the Holy Spirit, because they hadn't been unfaithful or hadn't violated uh, their uh, fidelity, their, their marital purity. They, they say they weren't uh, having sex with boys, yet they became pregnant. They later confessed that indeed they had had sex and they had violated their promise to their parents of being pure. In Joseph's day, this was unheard of. They would have been a public shame. And there are a couple places throughout the New Testament where we see there's some reference to the fact that Jesus' family situation is unusual. Well, make no, make no mistake, friends. Joseph knew he wasn't the father. Mary knew she was pure. Yet God gave them a son. The son of God in the flesh. You know, I'm really glad that God interrupted history and visited us in a special way, aren't you? For that precious child conceived of a virgin, brought forth in a dirty, dusty, dark, dank stable. is the Redeemer of the world. See, that's not just a Christmas story. That's the most important event in human history. That God in His providential love for you and me would interrupt history and give us the Son of God. May we never forget the incredible miracle that is the virginal conception, the virginal birth of Jesus. You know, Jesus... In all of his miracles, there were great lessons for us. I think there are lessons that need to be taught about the virgin birth. I think, number one, we need to be reminded that God is capable to do whatever God chooses to do. God expects us to be faithful to our promises. If you're engaged, wait till you're married. If you're dating, wait till you're married. There are biblical responsibilities and stewardship that we must take very seriously. Joseph took those extremely seriously. He was going to put her away, but he was going to do it privately because he loved her. And in the midst of all that confusion and chaos and the pain that must have been going through his heart and mind, he has a dream and the Holy Spirit of God, and the angel of the Lord, calms him down. You think Joseph had doubts along the way? Probably not after that dream. He trusted her. The Bible tells us that there were other children involved in Mary and Joseph's life, and Jesus had brothers and sisters, according to Mark 8. I want you to understand something very important. Mary and Joseph demonstrated great restraint and great humility that they would bring into the world the Son of God. Can you imagine the great burden? Can you imagine Joseph is taking her to Bethlehem because of the census? He's going, Lord, she's very pregnant. And this is your pregnancy. Now all of a sudden we got to walk to Bethlehem. What's going on here? Couldn't find a place to stay. Lord, what's going on here? What kind of man must Joseph have been that God would choose him to be the earthly father of Jesus? I'd kind of like to get to talk to him someday, wouldn't you? 
the virgin birth of Jesus gives us hope. Because you and I have a sin problem. And that sin problem causes us to need a Savior. You see, the Bible says that all of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And the Old Testament presents a solution for sin. It's called a sacrifice. And when you would confess your sin, you would acknowledge that sin. You would take an animal and you would sacrifice that animal and you'd pour out that blood of that animal as a covering for your sin. You know the problem? There was no cleansing. It was just a covering. The Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur, Day of Covering, is a picture of the sacrifice, the guilt of the sacrifice being covered by the blood. Oh, but something much greater happened once and for all, Hebrews tells us, when Jesus came. And when he would go to the cross and die in our place, the Bible says that his sacrifice was once and forever complete and sufficient to cover and cleanse us from our sin. So you have a sin problem. All of us do. The Bible says all have sinned. The Bible says the wages of that sin is death. But the good news is Jesus came that we might have life. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Now, I know it's May. We don't think a lot about the Bethlehem story of Jesus. But his birth is just as relevant in May as it is in December. Because you need a redeemer. Jesus would be that savior. Of all the miracles in the Bible, let's not lose sight of this one. For the perfect sacrifice, the Son of God was born in Bethlehem. Because you and I needed a Redeemer. You and I needed a Savior. Do you know Him tonight? I trust you do. If you're not certain you know the Lord Jesus, why not right now simply pray a prayer, something like this? Dear Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. I know I need a Savior. I know that you died on the cross to be my Savior, and I repent of my sins, and I invite you to be my personal Redeemer. Come into my life. Save me. If you prayed a prayer similar to that, why not reach out to us through our website? You can get our email address there at the top of our website, fbc-sellersburg.org. Or if you'd like to know more about what it means to pray to receive Christ, you can go to our website, a link at the top says, Need Hope the Gospel. And you can read uh, the Billy Graham people. Have placed the, we've put Billy Graham's explanation of the gospel there on our website. You can find out what it means to trust Jesus. Wouldn't it be great if this May you experienced the Christ child and made it real for yourself? The greatest miracle? Maybe. I want news for you. I got news for you. I want you to hear this good news. Jesus came because I needed a Savior. Jesus came because you needed a Savior. Would you call upon Him? May God bless you.